Hey guys, it's Multiplier, and what we're doing is we're with Sonic Academy today, and we're having a look at how we can make the most out of the Spectrum Analyzer in Ableton. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you two or three useful little tips, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the other finer settings on Spectrum, and also what Spectrum Analyzer is actually doing, what it means and what it's representing. So what we've got is a situation where we might actually use a Spectrum Analyzer. So we've got a final master for one of my DJ versions of one of my my tracks and what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at it through a spectrum analyzer to see if the sub bass is hitting the level that we know it should be hitting so that's a prime use for a spectrum analyzer so what we'll do we'll just double click to bring out an empty version of the spectrum analyzer and then if we play the track through what we wanted to do is have a look at the sub frequencies and see in decibels in terms of exactly what minus number of a decibel it reaches the sub bass is hitting. Now we know from looking at reference tracks that it needs to be hitting just over minus six dB, maybe minus five. If it's a lot louder, then we've pushed it too hard. If it's a lot quieter, say minus eight, minus nine, we haven't pushed it loud enough. So let's have a quick look. So as you can see, it's quite hard to actually get a number on it because if you look, the bottom limit is minus 180. And then if you hover your mouse right near the top, I mean, it does give you a bit of a readout, but it's not very clear. So the two main tips I want to show you that I personally use all the time whenever I use a Spectrum Analyzer is first of all, if you click this little arrow over here, this will make it a lot bigger. So you can you can see a lot more clearly the spread of frequencies because you've got more space to look at it. It's worth noting you can drag it up or down to give you again more or less room. But another key one that I don't see a lot of people doing but makes life an awful lot easier for me whenever I'm using Spectrum is turning off the auto range settings. So see right here it says auto. If we turn that off, what that will do is it will stop the range of the spectrum analyzer automatically adjusting. Because if you notice right now, it adjusts based on the input signal, which sounds like a great idea. But the problem with that is, as you see, as the sound trails off, your final line is contained right in the top section. So you can't see really what's happening. So we'll click auto, which fixes it into fixed range. And then we'll just change it to something we like the look of maybe, maybe something like this. And because we're just looking at the sub note or the main fundamental sub frequency, which will be this massive peak down here, we don't actually need to worry about all the other frequencies. So we can focus in the range to say something like six or minus 28, whatever makes sense for us. We just need to make sure we can see this sub note and how high it's hitting. So we can see in this case, as we hover our mouse over it, it's going right up to around minus 4.8 or so. Let's try play again to make sure. So in fact, the main, that's the kick hitting minus four. So you can see the sub is in fact around minus six. We can see this line here, which is pretty much exactly what we want. Remember that was exactly what we were looking for. And until we fixed the range like this, we couldn't see with enough detail exactly where the kick was hitting, where the sub was hitting. So these two main tips are going to be the biggest and most useful ways to make the most out of Spectrum Analyzer, just using this little arrow to make it big and then fixing the range. You can set that up as a default if you want. If you right click, do save as default preset, it will set it as a default preset in Spectrum. It's worth considering if, if that sounds cool to you. And then in terms of what Spectrum is doing in general, what the Spectrum Analyzer means, what it's basically doing is it's taking your your sound or your signal, which in this case will be our track. And it's doing some fancy maths called Fourier analysis, or the actual branch of it is called fast Fourier transforms, which is why if you actually click this little info view, you might see the words FFT floating around. So you see, as we hover our mouse over the block here, it says FFT length. So that basically stands for fast Fourier transforms. And what that's doing is it's taking your input signal and it's approximating or it's representing the signal in terms of a sum of sine waves, because there's a whole bunch of math that basically says you can split up any signal into a sum or an infinite sum of sine waves. And that's pretty much what is happening here. And, and the reason why it's quite important, I think, to understand is it allows you to better read and understand what spectrum means. Because once you realize it's purely an approximation, it allows you to better understand what spectrum means. And it also allows you to fine tune the controls and again, have a better understanding of what it's doing. So for example, what we can do, we can actually tweak the controls. So if we just play the track through a little bit and change the range a bit, 
So if we have a look now, we can see if we have a look what's happening in the low end, it, it looks like you've got one giant peak, but it's that giant peak is actually spreading out over multiple frequencies, but that's not actually what's happening. Because yes, you do have a giant peak that looks like it spreads over say 20 hertz. It's purely an approximation. It's purely a result of the mass that's used. And we can see that because if we change this block number here, the higher the block number, the better accuracy spectrum will deliver, but the higher the CPU load. So what we want to do is to prove almost the opposite. If we change the block to a low number, this will be a low accuracy. And you'll see now, see how you can't see almost any detail in the low end? So if we didn't realize that spectrum was purely an approximation. We could be led into thinking that there's a lot of mud in the low end that we needed to clear out. But in fact, there's not. It's purely that spectrum is an approximation. So what we need to do is use the fact it's an approximation and use our ears and our understanding to figure out, right, is there actually any low end mud that needs clearing out or not? So similarly, if we flip it up to the higher setting, which would be 16,000 and something, we can see when that sub note is held. We don't actually have a lot of low end rumble in the, the low end. There's a little bit, but certainly not as much as you'd expect if we set the block number to 2000. So you can probably imagine how, if we maybe had the option of setting the block to an even higher number, we might see even less supposed low end rumble. And there you go. That's some better ways to use Spectrum Analyzer. And hopefully you now have a better understanding also of what Spectrum Analyzer is doing and what it actually means so you can use it more efficiently in your tracks. I've been Multiplier, hope you enjoyed.